Where the hell the last week went, I have no idea. But big day, yes, we had a teaser last week. Uh, today, we've had the reveal of what is actually happening at the start of Living World Season 4. A season that some of the devs apparently can be quoted as saying some of their proudest work yet. Uh, we had the release date last week. If you guys missed it, it's going to be November 28th, seven days from now. But uh, we had a lot more information today. It seems like more's going to trickle out as the week goes along. And importantly, it is the fabled, the guest at triple release that so far Guild Wars has never done. So let's talk about it a little bit. And uh, we do have a juicy cool trailer to run through. So first of all, just some basic information. First of all, it's called Daybreak. And that might not be too interesting to some of you guys, but I do like looking at the names. They've done clever names in the past, like a crack in the ice, and they're always at least vaguely descriptive of what's going to happen. So what exactly is this a daybreak of? It seems hopeful. Is it literally just that some of the important story here is going to happen right as the sun is rising? Uh, one of the cool things that I saw a connection people made over on Reddit is that it's the opposite of Nightfall. And that's pretty damn cool. If you don't know why that's cool, uh, 10 years ago, when we got to go to Ilona in this region of the world for the first time in this franchise, it was with a campaign called Guild Wars 1 Nightfall. And now we're returning to these areas, and the start of Season 4, which touches on those areas, is called Daybreak. Uh, so I wonder what the devs are playing out there. Maybe it, that's it, that's the whole story, but I'm looking out for whatever happens on the patch. So, as well as the title, as well as the release date, MMORPG.com, did give a bit more detail, which ArenaNet themselves haven't. Uh, there's been a bit of discussion, is this reputable? Can we expect this to be real? I think we can. MMORPG uh, seems to get early access and is privy to extra information beyond most others quite frequently. So I don't think this is going to be wrong. They've probably heard from ArenaNet and we'll have the confirmation soon enough. Uh, but they put on a tiny little article advertising the patch for the scope of this patch. It's got such few words given to it. But it says down there, arriving just two months after the release of Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire, Season 4 will debut its first episode titled Daybreak, and in addition to Episode 1, the release will include a Raid Wing and a new Fractal for players to delve into. If you've been watching the community very closely these past definitely four to five weeks, uh, there's been a lot of uh, frothing around. People have really wanted those raid uh, wings coming in. The devs have been putting them out a lot slower than I think many of us were hoping. So it's really good to see that whatever is coming is at least making it in by the end of November with everything else. I think it could have been really bad if a raid wing wasn't announced on this patch. And there is, as always, a lot of other back and forth. Oh, but the raiding community is so small, they don't need to be catered to. I think even if the raiding community is small, and we can debate quite a lot beyond just looking at Guild Wars 2 efficiency as to how small that is, I actually think the effect it has on the rest of the community uh, is incredibly profound, even if the player base is uh, kind of narrow at the end. So I think it's great that we've got a raid wing. And then a fractal on top two. Uh, and that I wouldn't have really expected because we got another Fractal quite recently, really. Uh, so good to see the, the Fractal team seem to have upped the ante a bit. And maybe we'll be getting those a little bit more regularly in the future. Uh, maybe I should hold my tongue on suggesting that. So yeah, it's a pretty ridiculous release. We got the triple release. On the one hand, this mark makes it now the biggest, the largest living world patch ever. Uh, we've never had all three at once. We've had a couple of double releases, never all three at once. That's bound to excite people. On the other hand... Uh, I do have to wonder one thing, and that's whether some content was, as they say, held hostage uh, so that they could get the triple release. And the idea is that by doing this, they're hoping to have a big punch and a lot of hype. And, you know, seeing how little MMORPG talked about the patch and other things, I wonder whether it really would have been worthwhile. Especially, um, as well, as a player, I kind of like it if they would have staggered it. Like, you can reveal it all at once and announce it all at once for the big hype spike, but then, like, do the Fractal and then seven days later do the Raid and then seven days later do Living World or in whatever order you like. That might have been better. Now, I'm faced with the reality of logging in and having to decide which of the three I do first and risk being spoiled on some of them, I guess. But uh, hey, and I suppose as a YouTuber, I've got some serious thinking to do now on how I can possibly produce so much stuff in a reasonable amount of time for you all. Oh dear. All right, so there you go. That's all the extra information. And as I say, I'm sure we'll get more as time goes by and that this will start connecting to current events. And when I say as time goes by, I literally mean over the next seven days. Let's talk about the trailer. Now, we had that teaser last week. This isn't much more of a teaser, I think. It takes the kind of same format as we saw seven days ago, where what they're going to do is rehash a lot of old things. 
and then add a bit onto the end. A very simple trailer for what seems to be a massive patch. I wonder about that, but let's have a watch, guys, and see what we think. We, the gods, saw there could be no victory in our inevitable conflict with the Elder Dragons. If you won't join the fight against the dragons, I'll see you all burn with them. That conflict could only end in two ways. The ruin of the Six, or the utter destruction of Tyria's magical balance. We only handed an Elder Dragon the energy of a god. What could go wrong? The Awakened have been terrorizing our town. Caging anyone who resists. I don't know how much longer we can survive. Orin? Hope she still remembers who her friends are. Well, there we have it. Guild Wars 2 Daybreak, November 28th, 2017. So, well, yes, it's a simple trailer. As I said, we do get footage of the new map. And uh, speculating about where exactly that could be is going to be something fun we'll obviously uh, be able to dive into. Now, there is a bit of dialogue in this. I do want to talk about just uh, very shortly. First of all, obviously, the whole way through the start, it's mostly just things we heard in the Path of Fire main campaign. Very spoiler-heavy stuff this time. So, Cormier talking uh, about how the gods saw there could be no victory in their inevitable conflict with the Elder Dragons. They saw only two ways out. Uh, we hear a line from Ritlock that says, we only handed an Elder Dragon the energy of a god. What could go wrong? I think that was in the Path of Fire campaign as well. Ritlock is actually technically wrong there. I'm going to be a total nerd here. We didn't really hand Kraukatoric the power of a god. Balthazar was stripped of his godly power while he was in the mists, and the power that Balthazar actually had was Bloodstone from the Out of the Shadows patch at the start of Season 3, and a bit more from the machine, obviously. That's what Kraukatoric got. Not necessarily God stuff, Ritlock, and writing department. Uh, but hey, so, uh, yeah, we don't really get too much more. Then finally, we do get a bit of dialogue from the patch. We hear... It's kind of funny the way they do this as well, because the whole trailer is about these big epic set pieces and the Elder Dragons versus the gods. And then we hear, oh yeah, the Awakened, yeah. Uh, so the dialogue is, the Awakened have been terrorizing our town, caging anyone who might resist. I don't know how much longer we can survive. Um, so wherever we're going in this new map is going to have a town in it. That's really not that interesting. Don't forget the Path of Fire Season 4 Living World maps could be huge. Uh, because of mounts and so we don't really get uh, a sense of that I don't think from the trailer they could be you know the same size as the season 3 stuff but they could be huge and obviously there's gonna be some kind of town or something in one of these locations uh, but yeah the, the I guess the awakened importantly are gonna be a big focus and certainly some of these shots we're about to look at frame by frame uh, and then we end with the Aureen comment hope she can still remember who her friends are again because right at the end of the story uh, she kind of went MIA after also getting a ton of this bloodstone magic and so forth. So let's uh, jump on through, see what we can uh, figure out. And again, I do love this new Living World uh, logo, the purpley version. All right, so uh, we open up with some images of the gods. These are statues of the gods. You should be familiar with these. These are in Amnoon. Uh, you can go to them right now in game. And I think it's kind of funny because if the, the camera kept panning to the right here, uh, we would have seen the Balthazar statue with the basket on its head, uh, which is kind of funny. Maybe there's something we can look at on this one as the actual statues that they're showing us, uh, which I believe we've got Dwayna here. I think this is Dwayna we're looking at with her wing. Uh, and that's funny to have her in the trailer because she's like the one god with the least going on. There have been lists of hints, it seems. There's been stuff going on with Grentham, the underworld, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I believe what we're looking at here is, is, is this Cormier? Is she blindfolded? I think this is the Cormier one. And this is obviously just being shown because Cormier is about to speak in the audio. Here we have that shot again. They've used this in the teaser, and now they're using this here as well. Are they suggesting that there was more to this in the Eye of Janthea vision? I'm not entirely certain. Uh, but there we go, we get the uh, lovely image of the Path of Fire teaser with the spear going through the dragon's head. Uh, a scene that never took place in the campaign itself at all, right? 
Uh, so what was this? Some big misdirection? Was what the eye showed us something that is still going to come to pass? And uh, we'll learn more about that right here. Uh, it is kind of funny looking back at this in retrospect, especially with all the allied people facing on over this uh, this impaled dragon. Dragon of fire, too. Uh, here we get Balthazar marching forwards. And then we have this next shot. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is, again, very spoilery moment. So if you haven't played the campaign, I haven't talked about it much on the channel. Hopefully this isn't too bad for you guys. But this shot's actually... Uh, I When I first saw this, I thought this was at the very end of the story, you know, atop the Joko's uh, Hanging Gardens. But actually... Uh, this is the POV shot we get right before, and again, big spoilers, we die in the campaign. That's what this is. Uh, and so that's kind of curious to me. Um, this is Aureen chained up as she came to our rescue. Uh, maybe they're showing this because Aureen, as we can hear from the dialogue in the trailer, Aureen is going to come flying in towards the end of this patch, it seems as well. Maybe early. And uh, maybe they're making us remember that she did it once before. But this is Balthazar killing us. This is also kind of interesting because this is right before we go to the underworld in the story of the Domain of the Lost. And we obviously have current events hinting at special things happening in the underworld. We have the announcement here that there's a fractal and a raid coming out. What are the odds that the uh, new story involves the underworld? Fairly high? Well, if not the story, what about the raid? Maybe that's set in the underworld. What about, you know, like, it seems, and then they're showing us this shot here in the trailer as well. It really seems to be making us think about death. Because that's the fatal strike right there. That's the, the cut to black that eventually we see the underworld. Uh, so, kind of curious. Here we have the actual end of the story. This is the conflict between Balthazar and Kraukatorik. What a badass Kraukatorik looks. I love the way they framed this. Uh, he could be easy to miss in the actual fight. I respect that they didn't do it in cutscene form because it's so much more impactful when you're just playing the game and you look in the sky and there you see Kraukatorik's worm-like head uh, poking out at you. But you can miss some good shots, so it's nice that this trailer at least shows very clearly this dude. Um, and also, you notice they held off on that until the actual experience of it in-game, and now it's appearing in trailers afterwards. So here we're uh, looking at Cormier. Will Cormier appear in the patch? Almost certainly not, I would say. But this is the actual shot in the story with Kazmir and Kanak. Now, here we flash through something. I don't know what this is. I have no memory of this. Is this a new... Because right now in the trailer, it's all old stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pause at the perfect moment here for you guys, right when it flashes. Here we go. We'll do it this way. Uh, right now in the trailer, we're looking at all old stuff, aren't we? And then right in the middle, they splice this here. Did this happen in the Path of Fire story and I'm just forgetting? I do not recall this whatsoever. So is this the new patch? Is this actually our first footage in the trailer of that? And who is this that's being shattered? It's being like shattered by a fiery effect. Does that suggest Balthazar Primordus? I don't know. Either that or I'm a dimwit and it has appeared somewhere. And the comments will quickly correct me. So get scrolling, guys. You'll see it down there. So here we've got um, a nice little setup here. Again, this is Path of Fire. Actually, beautiful image of a forgotten here. Uh, this was obviously to do with Vlast and so on. We get uh, some of these images from that cutscene. More recap. Balthazar's destruction. The energy flowing out. Uh, Ritlock's bad audio. Incorrect audio in the background there as Kraukatorik absorbs some magic. And uh, now... We have the final shot of Path of Fire. So this is Krakatoric flying towards the sun, so we can suggest... And that was Sunrise, wasn't it? So he was going towards the east, and in the AMA, the dev said he went south. So southeast, I guess, is where we're likely to think. If you take that as a direction from the very end of the story, or from Amnoon, I guess, they both kind of lead into similar places. Maybe these are places we're going to be looking at for uh, the, next, uh, the next map, right? So they show us that. Now, they do something very cool in the trailer here with the aspect ratio. You'll notice, as I skip through... All the start of the trailer, we've uh, we've had our, our letterboxing, right? To keep it very cinematic. And just as a cheeky little thing I noticed, uh, right as we cut to the new map, we go to a full 16 by 9 resolution. No more letterboxing there at all. And here we are. So we see Kraukatorik fly to, to, towards somewhere. We get a new map. I'm pretty sure that they're saying, hey, this is towards where Kraukatorik went, or at least on the route. So where is this place? This shot we're looking at here right now already, I actually think is the most interesting of all. Um, and that we can dig into the most. So, first, yes, there's Awakened here, right? I don't think any of these are new varieties of Awakened. They're escorting Alonans around. They're in control. This is Palawa Joko's kingdom. So, on the table, we've got Scavenger's Causeway. We've got Corner, very likely. We've got uh, more regions of the Desolation, but this clearly isn't the Desolation. I don't think anyone would have expected us to go even further south than that. Not to skip all the way to, say, Istan. 
you guys are new Guild Wars 2 players, you might not realize, but well off of the map, way to the south of where we can even see in Guild Wars 2 right now, there is an island nation known as Istan. It's where the Nightfall campaign a decade ago actually started. No one would have thought we'd go to Istan in this patch, would they? Even if that is the general direction that Krakatoric seems to have flown. Well, you might be surprised that this is almost seeming to hint at that. And how it's hinting at that is back here, we've got this telescope looking towards the sky. They've deliberately shot this at night. Now, that could be associated with the title of the patch, Daybreak, but I actually think that they've shot this at night just to make us think a bit more about this. These people here are monitoring the stars, and we also have these kind of pillars. Now, the funny thing is, in Guild Wars 1, Oh, hell, I'll show you some footage right now. Look at this place. An early outpost on Istan was called the Astralarium, and this is it here. The Astralarium was a place that was home to an order that were watching the skies. Now, honestly, there wasn't too much story about these dudes. They never really made much of an impact on the actual plot, but it was a region. And so coming back to the trailer now, what do you guys think? Is this the Astralarium? I think that's the main thing people are asking themselves. And on top of just this and the fact we've got it shot at night and so forth, uh, we also have these pillars. Now, very interestingly, these things on top of the pillars look almost exactly alike the ones we saw in the Astralarium back in Guild Wars 1, as you can see, right? These are the same things! So, it seems like a pretty strong correlation right there, doesn't it? Now, I will, as exciting as all of that is, the idea that Season 4 throws us straight to Istan, I'm going to put a cap on it, because I actually don't think that's what's happened. Or I'm going to guess that that's not what's happened. I think that if we were going all the way to Istan, the devs probably would have had Return to Istan as a tagline or something like that here, because people would have been so much more hyped that we'd go so far, so fast, right? Uh, I actually think something else might have happened. See, the Astralarium... While it was an interesting location and it was set in Istan where there were lots of quests and things, didn't actually have much impact on the story or the people who lived there, the people who worked there, a group known as the Order of the Sky. There was really very little lore about the Order of the Sky or what they did or what they impacted. Uh, about two years ago, I did a, an on-stream playthrough of Nightfall and I remembered coming back to the Astralarium and talking about how the devs didn't use them very much. So I wonder if what we're looking at in this trailer is not the Astralarium. But we're looking at the uh, Order of the Sky having moved somewhere new and built another observatory for themselves and found another location to look at the stars. And I wonder whether that's what's actually happening. That the devs haven't taken us all the way back there, but they've just expanded on this faction. They are one of the orders, right? Like Orvelona, the Order of the Sun Spears, the Order of Whispers, the Order of the Sky. And we've had nothing on them, so I wonder. Apparently as well from Wiki. Uh, as I look up as I'm making this video with you guys. So there used to be many years ago, and this was like even kind of uh, before I was properly focusing on things in the Guild Wars scene, there were, I believe it was monthly or maybe even weekly lore articles written uh, like in canon, this character called the Scribe. And supposedly in one of the Scribe articles from years ago, uh, revealed that the Order of the Sky, the people uh, of this, this, the, who potentially built this, f had found the exact date of the world's birth. And that's a pretty interesting little tidbit and piece of information that could be played with in a meaningful way with contemporary storylines. So I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about on this. Is this the Order of the Sky? I don't think it's this, Dan, but I think it could be that faction. And I guess we'll see. So, uh, yeah, we get some awakened, uh, sort of controlling the people there. Uh, we move on to another new location. This, again, will presumably be in the same map. Now we're in day, uh, and we hear about people have been caged up for defying the Awakened, so we're going to just hear a bit more about that. It does, I will say here, look like a pretty big map, but these kinds of things can be very deceptive, so don't get too excited. I would love a huge, enormous, desolation-sized expansion with Episode 1, and then Christ, imagine with all the other episodes after that. I would love it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to be tricked. I'm not going to be fooled by these trailers. We'll see what the devs say and we'll see what happens as the week goes along. Um, but they kind of need big maps to work with mounts, so I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, so here we get another beautiful looking room. There's not much I can talk about here. We've seen a lot of large Joko statues like this uh, in Vabi as time's gone along. I do like the lighting and I do like kind of this enclosed space as we travel forwards. Uh, I will note at this point as well, I know that looks kind of dungeon-y, so you might question, is this a raid? Uh, uh, or, or the fractal. I don't think raid or fractal footage is probably appearing here. I think that this is like the living world portion of the patch and a trailer for the living world stuff. That means new story and new open world map stuff, but not too much else. That would be my, my suggestion anyway. And uh, now we move forward again. This area reminds me a lot of the Lost Precipice, uh, probably because it's so many of the same assets. 
Uh, and the question is, I guess, where are we then? If it's uh, if it's not Istan, where are we? Well, this is looking a lot drier. I wonder if they've taken us to corner. I wonder if we've gone a little bit further south. The thing is, though, if we did that, and especially if the Chantry of Secrets had become a thing, I would have hoped we would have seen some of the Chantry in this trailer, as it would have been such a prominent location. But perhaps they're holding that off because of spoilery things. There's also the, the possibility that we've um, maybe gone east or west. Uh, and I did a video sort of about some of these locations. What is at least the case is we do have a dock here. And I think more than anything else, this shot can help us pinpoint maybe where we're looking. People who are on these ships as well, I actually think it's quite interesting too. And so there we have that. We get uh, a dragon flying along and using a laser beam. I actually think if we go slow enough, we'll see that this could be Aurene. It looks like Aurene's kind of new design and wingspan. But I suppose it could be an enemy uh, minion destroying the ships. I'm guessing either story or dynamic events will actually have that happening in real time. Uh, you remember, Corteria had a lot of fun moments with ships sailing in and sinking and stuff. Uh, this here, we get the player character and Ritlock Brimstone. This is as Brimstone says, do you think she remembers who her friends are? The background here is actually Amnoon. Uh, I suppose actually, though, are those docks Amnoon docks? I don't think they are Amnoon docks. No, that's totally a different area. Um, but here we're at Amnoon, and remember the teaser showed something. So I think we're going to open the patch with a small instance at Amnoon with all of the craziness everywhere. And I do think this will be an instance for what it's worth. I don't think that this is going to be, you know, they'll permanently change that map. I think they'll do it as an instance to, so that the new Path of Fire accounts right now don't have this weird thing where it looks like everything's branded, but no one's acting as such. Sort of similar to how Core was messed up for a while with the State of Lion's Arch. Uh, but so yeah, we get that and then finally, uh, I guess the devs really cared about this This was sort of their money shot here We get confirmation that that creature we saw on the teaser last week is not Aurene. It's just some, some kind of new Kraukatoric minion This is Aurene and she's a lot bigger now um, But she's still you know, she's still blue. She's still the same kind of design. She does look a lot more monstrous I really like her wingspan here. Uh, I have seen it commented on that they have conveniently scaled her to a size that she'd be pretty mountable right now. Uh, and it would not surprise me if we see that in this patch. I think it's very likely that in a personal story instance, we'll be able to climb on Aurene and control her like the Griffin controls. Maybe with some slightly different abilities, maybe a special action hotkey or a new uh, engage or something. But I think that people, whether they've bought the Griffin or not, unlocked the Griffin or not, or done any of that or not, I think when you start season... Four, or at least at some point in season four, we're gonna be riding her and the scale they've made her is pretty nice My next question is will she get even bigger? By the throughout the season by the end of the season Or is it gonna be like each season we see her get bigger and meaner? Uh, I can't wait for her to be even even more scary looking and there you go She uh, flies in and perhaps her flying in there They're drawing some comparison to when she tried to save us with Balthazar except this time. She's actually gonna kick ass That'd be pretty nice wouldn't it? Well, there you, so there you go. That's Daybreak. That's what I can pick out of the trailer. Pretty interesting stuff. And because it is so big, I wouldn't be surprised to see little tweets from the devs, teasers, uh, especially related to the other formats and the additions that are coming there, the Raid and the Fractal. Uh, I've gone, I flipped and flopped on the idea of a triple release quite often over the years. Uh, the idea of them doing everything all together and the crazy hype it could create uh, has very much excited me before. And I hope that now that they're actually doing it, we'll see that work. But uh, if it doesn't, I kind of, I kind of, I'm gonna start questioning whether maybe they should stagger them just a little bit, just a couple of days in between at least. But we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Did I miss anything? Let me know, and I will be down in the comments, geeking out as always. Thanks, guys. Your support means everything, and I'll see you very shortly.